This tutorial is an introduction to VizPro. We'll focus on what this extension does, how to navigate its user interface, and we'll end with creating a basic parametric model. VizPro enables you to create parametric models in SketchUp. Put simply, this means keeping track of the steps to create the model so that objects can be adjusted later without having to undo and redo lots of steps. A simple example of a parametric model would be a box whose wall thickness you can adjust, or a solid whose fillet radius you can adjust. For a more complex and more interesting example, we'll use one of VizPro's sample models. To find these, go to fluidinteractive.com and choose Products, SketchUp Extensions, Viz. Scroll to the bottom of this page. Here you'll find installation instructions, and if you haven't yet installed VizPro, you'll want to do that first. On this side, you'll find links to the user manual and forums, and this link for sample projects. The download is a zip file containing over 40 models that are already set up with parametric properties. The model we want to open now is the one titled Voronoi Chair. Here's the chair model in SketchUp, and here's the VizPro toolbar with its two icons. Click the first icon, which opens the Viz window. The chair's modeling history is here, on the left panel, represented by these interconnected nodes. You can zoom in and out with these icons, or with your scroll wheel, zoom extents, and zoom in on selected nodes. Right-click and drag to view more nodes. You can also drag nodes around to see what connects with what. On the model side of the Viz window, you can also zoom in and out. You can left click and drag with the Alt key to orbit, and middle click and drag with the Alt key to pan. The input for this model is this slider called num holes. Its default value is 30, but you can slide to the left to the minimum number of five, or to a higher number. When I minimize the Viz Pro window, I can see that change is reflected in the SketchUp model as well. For another example, Look in your sample projects for the SketchUp model called Structure. If I double click on the variable name Width, I can view or change the min and max values. To change the value, I can use the slider or double click the value to enter an exact number. Look what happens when the width goes to 20 and when the height goes to 8. I can also thicken the truss members themselves and increase or decrease the number of trusses. Now we'll look at some of the basics of the Viz user interface. I'm opening a new SketchUp file, and here's my blank Viz window. At the top left are listed some common operations and their shortcuts. I can press the H key to scroll through the list, or to hide the list, or bring it back. Note that I'm showing this for PC. Shortcuts for Mac users are slightly different. Now I'll show a simple example of how nodes work. Pressing the spacebar brings up the Create Node window. There's a long list of available types of nodes, and you can click on any node to see its name, category, and description. You can also search for nodes. Any term you enter will be searched through all names, categories, and descriptions. To create the node called Add, I can highlight it in the list and click OK, or I can highlight it and press Enter, or I can just double-click it. The new node is called Add1. In this node, I can move my cursor over each attribute, x, y, and z, to see its value, which right now are all zero. To assign a value, I can double-click and enter a number. I'll make x equal to 5 and y equal to 10. The Add node adds x plus y to get z, so when I hover over Z, its value is 15. Another type of node is Preview, included in the Display category. When I connect these two nodes by clicking and dragging between their pins, I get a visual display of Z. Expanding this node shows the value of 15. To create another Add node, since I know that Add is part of the Math category, I can go to Math, Add. 
This creates the new node add2. I can connect z from add1 to x of add2, and I can see that the value of 15 here is correct. If I make this y value 12, then go to display preview and connect this preview to z, I get my final value of 15 plus 12 equals 27. Changing the x value up here from 5 to 6 results in an increase of 1 everywhere. For any node, I can double click its title to change it, and I can use Control F to search for a node by name. And like with any application, Control Z is for undo and Control Y is for redo. For example, I can click on a node to node connector to remove it and use Control Z to bring it back. I can select a node and press the delete key to remove it. Now I'm back to a blank model. Now we'll put together what we know so far and create a parametric cylinder in SketchUp. Go to Primitive Circle to create a circle node. Search for Face from Wire and create that node. Connect the circle output to the wire. Next, find Shape Prism to add a prism node which extrudes a face. Connect the wire output to the prism shape. The input for the user will be a slider. Double click its title bar to name it Cylinder Radius. You could also change the min and max values. Connect the slider to the circle radius. You can now use the slider to adjust the radius or double click to enter an exact value. To adjust the cylinder height, edit its vector value. For a vertical cylinder, keep x and y zero, but change z. The last step is to bring the cylinder into SketchUp. Exporting from Viz into SketchUp is done with nodes in the sync category. Since the cylinder is a shell, create a shell sync node. Connect the prism output to the shell export. Returning to SketchUp, Here's the cylinder. It's a group given the instance name of shell sync one. If I go back to viz, reduce the radius and rename the shell sync node, those changes are reflected back in SketchUp. As you can see, there are many more nodes and features to cover and we'll get to these in later tutorials.